Thank you very much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I am a trend editor at futures agency Trend Bible. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of some of our home and interior trends for 2023. So we're going to be looking at one of our macro trends and then two of our design forecasts for both spring, summer 23 and autumn, winter. Really quickly, before I dive into today's presentation, a quick introduction to myself my background experience and of course my role at Trend Bible. So hello, I am Wendy. I am a trend forecaster and editor. So I've worked for some of the world's leading trend agencies and with brands and retailers across multiple industries, including home and interiors, fashion, baby and kids, lifestyle and gift and greetings. I also have a background in illustration and print design as well. So I have a big love of pattern of color and textiles. So over at Trend Bible, I work over on our subscription side of the business. So my job entails researching trends, analyzing trends, and writing reports for our My Trend Bible platform, which basically brings all those latest trends to your desktop and allows you to easily understand them and apply them for your specific market and for your consumer. Okay, on to today's presentation. So I'm going to start off by giving you a really brief introduction to Trend Bible, outlining a little bit about what it is that we do and our methodologies. I'm then, as I say, going to give you a sneak preview into three of our forecasts. So starting with our macro report, which looks at our consumer mindset and insight trends, and then into a preview of one of our spring summer 23 home design trends and finishing with one of our autumn winter design trends. I'll also be sticking around at the end. So if anybody has any questions, you can come up and say hello. So who are Trend Bible and what do we do? So we are a global future trends agency headquartered in the Northeast in Newcastle, but with a reach right around throughout the UK. So I'm based in our London division and also across Europe through to the US, Asia and beyond. Despite how much we've grown as an agency, we are still very much grounded in those Northeast roots. And the world's best brands and companies worldwide work with us to better understand future trends for their audience to make more informed commercial decisions. And what really makes Trend Bible unique as a trend forecasting agency is that our specialism has always been centered around the future of life at home. And as we've seen, never before has this been more important, particularly in recent years, post-pandemic, our homes have become so much more to us than simply a place to live. Our homes are often now our offices, our gyms, our schools, our restaurants, and most importantly, they are our sanctuary. So our work that we do is super varied. One minute, we might be writing a report on cook and dine trends for 2024. The next, we might expl be exploring how the impact of the cost of living is going to be affecting people within the rental market, for example. So we work in the world of kitchens, mattresses, toys, DIY and gardening, as well as gifting and celebration, food and drink. So it's a super broad remit that we look at, but all held together by that focus on the future of life at home, looking at how we interact with our families, how we relax, what we do for fun, and what product we want to surround ourselves with. So how do we do it? The world of trend and trend forecasting can often be seen as something that's a bit mysterious, a bit secretive. Um, so today we wanted to chat really quickly about a little bit about a methodology behind our trends and how we create forecasts and directions that help you to understand the bigger picture and lead to actionable directions and ultimately successful product. So we start with what we call mega trends. So these are a really important starting point because they influence just so much of the world around us. So topics that we explore here tend to span around 15 plus years. So these are really major societal shifts. Examples would be things like sustainability, diversity, and more recently things like the digital age or the metaverse. We then explore macro trends. So a macro trend is basically where you develop a slightly more detailed hypothesis, and it can knit together maybe two or more influences from those mega trends. And the reason that we focus more on macro trends at Trend Bible is that they tend to be much more specific, more useful, and more tangible than something so broad as a mega trend, especially for those who are designing products, experiences, or marketing messages. So from a commercial point of view, we think of the macro report as pretty much our starting point in terms of the product cycle. Every year, we produce our macro report, which works two years in advance, and this influences and sets the tone for the rest of our forecasts for that year. 
So from those macro trends, we then start to consider design details. So how does that macro trend manifest itself into design and product development and by season? So this comes in the form of our seasonal design trend forecasts, which detail color, surface, materials, and narrative. So today I'm going to be showing you trends from both our 2023 macro report and from our spring, summer, and autumn winter design forecast. So you can get a really good understanding about how this works and how this methodology will come to life. So I'm going to start by talking you through one of our macro trends, which comes from our 2023 home and interiors macro report. As you can see on the screen, we feature four trends in our home and interiors um, macro. So for 2023, these are entitled Radical Nature, Age of Emotion, Empowered Minds, and Dawn of the Digiscape. And today I'm going to be giving you a preview of Radical Nature. So let's explore what this idea of radical nature is all about. And this actually is a really interesting one to talk about following that fantastic um, panel that we just had, if anyone was able to catch that, all about sustainability and the new storytelling behind it. Sustainability is definitely that mega trend which kind of influences radical nature. But we're also talking about how people are reclaiming nature and how consumers are, are almost taking matters uh, into their own hands. So. Sustainability, nature are obviously huge topics at the moment from recent um, weather conditions. We can really see that these things are really at the forefront of consumers' minds. And consumers and brands alike can no longer put their head in the sand when it comes to the environment. By 2023, this will be really at a critical point and to not take a sustainable stance by 2023 will be viewed as being complicit. Companies, brands, and corporations need to understand and implement sustainable initiatives that will align with their consumer values. So sustainability is no longer an option, but a real priority that brands should not ignore. We're also tracking here how a reconnection with nature and a pause for reflection has resulted in an increased awareness of our fragile ecosystems, but also a recognition of the real benefits of being outdoors. We're seeing communities flock together to bring green, habitable spaces into urban areas. So things from city-like agriculture initiatives to urban forests. So this really highlights the need to democratize nature, amplifying the intersectional environmentalism movement in an effort to reclaim accessible green spaces, activities and experiences for all. So consumers will be increasingly suffering with eco-anxiety and they'll be looking to companies and brands to support them in these concerns. So let's break the idea of radical nature down a bit further as we look at some of the things that are influ influencing this, including democratizing the outdoors. So the pandemic really highlighted the inadequate and unequal access to high quality green spaces, which can contribute to a lack of sustainable awareness and inclusion. Consumers are now demanding an intersectional approach to the climate conversation, one that includes everyone. And this will help to foster, create, and deliver inclusive and equitable solutions. So here we're exploring some case studies. So on the right, we see an image from Unlikely Hikers, which is a, a diverse, anti-racist, and body-liberating outdoor community. They work to redefine stereotypes and feature the unrepresented outdoor consumer. So this organization challenges uh, the established sort of outdoor industries, aesthetic and accessibility. They have a podcast, they have an increased size performance wear range, and they do things like community club heights, which really broaden the definition of who the outdoors is for, actively creating an all-inclusive space. The recreationist resurgence. So we're seeing this always on and live to work careerist mindset is increasingly being rejected by consumers. I'm sure everyone's heard that quiet quitting phrase which is doing the rounds a lot at the minute. So this really sees a resurgence of recreation and slow travel which is set to continue both in 2023 and beyond. So we're seeing that consumer awareness around authentic engagement in a slower paced and outdoor life is growing with a focus on rebuilding relationships with the outdoors and reclaiming green spaces, becoming a key market for consideration here. So there's also conversation about how we use our green spaces and the natural resources around us. Resilient food systems and the rise of grow your own environmentalism now rank as really high concerns for both millennial and Gen Z. 
Consumers are building greater resilience into their food system, so they have the ability to better endure a crisis in the future. So by diversifying away from a centralized supply chain to a more multifaceted one, they are increasing the food system's ability to react and adapt to shocks. So here we're looking at things like micro farm enterprises such as CropSwap, who first opened its first farm last year back in 2021. So they seek to grow food on unused spaces, creating green jobs as well as hyper-local and nutrient-rich food. We're also looking at community gardening enterprises, things such as Allot Me. So they aim to make access to community gardening as simple as ordering a taxi or an Airbnb. So this digital platform works to help more people grow food in their own city. How it works is it pairs local residents with available spaces and gardens within their area. So in London, less than 40% of residents have their own private garden space, but they still want the opportunity to eat healthier and more sustainably from their own patch. So then let's take a look at what we call our thought starters um, for this radical nature trend. So these are basically action points, questions to ask yourself and some food for thought to consider how you, how your business and how your brand can action some of these issues and mindsets discussed within this macro trend. So we're asking, with sustainability now non-negotiable for consumers, how might your brand authentically engage in the outdoor boom? How will your brand help democratize nature and reclaim green spaces for all? So that was a preview of just one of our macro trends for 2023. We're now gonna take a look at how that radical nature trend is really filtering down into one of our design trends for spring, summer 23. So this is a preview into our home and interiors trend forecast for spring, summer 23. Again, we have four design trends per season and future Eden is the one that we're gonna be looking at today. So here on screen, we have some key words that explain what this trend is all about. So we're looking at urban resilience. This trend is functional, it's resistant and durable. It's utilitarian, pet friendly and eco-conscious. We have a quote here from one of our trend editors who says, Future Eden combines the best of tech-friendly urban lifestyles with the benefits of tending to the natural world. This trend speaks to the rising number of eco-conscious consumers that expect sustainable products and circular design without compromising on a fresh outlook. So what is it that's driving this Future Eden trend? The pandemic has fueled alternative living models that enable shorter or fewer commutes for many and more time for the things that we enjoy, alongside greenable and more walkable neighborhoods. Worries of a lasting urban exodus are pushing authorities to address long festering problems, so city centers need to work hard to entice people back now that it's no longer always necessarily for work. As we just explored in our radical nature macro trend, the global lockdowns really highlighted how many people, particularly those living in air, urban areas, are missing out on green space. There is now a need to democratize nature and reframe eco-narratives from wholesome and rural towards accessible for all. Nature-friendly initiatives are all already being explored by authorities that are looking at how cities can be better for people and nature alike. So Paris, for example, Paris is removing half of its 140,000 on-street car parking spaces, replacing concrete with gardens to make the city more greener and more human-centered. So in a post-pandemic world where working from home will continue to at least be part of the equation, there will be a want and need to get more from our local areas. The 15-minute project envisions a future for neighborhoods that would assure all necessary amenities exist a short walk from people's front doors. So the project recommends developing cities in smaller modules with essential services concentrated around community hubs. Within the home, householders are really looking at how to bring the outside in to create little Edens of their own. And consumers will favor the essentials and eliminate the unnecessary as functionality and durability drive design detail. So now onto our mood board for Future Eden where we can really see those ideas behind this trend visually come to life. So we can see that this trend explores a kind of balance between the best of urban as well as natural environments. 
Increasingly, we're seeing, um, we're seeing people surpassing those classic notions of what an eco look is expected to look out and towards a fresher feel, one that focuses on biophilic design, circular thinking, repairability, all these things are really key here. We're also looking at future forward technology, so how technology can be utilized for things that tap into this nature focus, so how tech can be utilized for things like micro farming at home, to creating functional and longer lasting and easy to pair and easy to recycle product. Outdoor experiences set the scene for much needed escapism from the concrete jungle, and inspired by their outdoor exploits, people create their own Edens at home. So nature brings decoration and color to urban environments as pockets of green emerge among the gray. So we're really seeing home agriculture become the center of culinary experiences as householders join the fight for urban resilience. So they're using tech to support this. So a glimpse at their smartphone might, might reveal how they need to, which crops are ready to harvest before their microgreens. Design direction is also very pet friendly within this within this trend, so furry and also non-furry companions become really key members of the family here. And we're looking to clever storage solutions which keep pet product tucked away out of use when not in, when not in use and enjoying the best of both worlds. So we're looking at sleek interiors, but things that also happen to take into account the need of our animals. On to the color palette. So our design trends always feature an eight Pantone color palette, um, which are matched to both the Pantone TCX and Coated Library. So we can see here that green is really, really key. This is a key shade for the season, but also fits really into the nature focus of this trend. We can see varying shades of green ranging from that earthy dill to purposefully artificially looking jelly bean. These are really key for this nature loving yet urban trend. And here we see how those shades are being paired and applied together. So shades of green are paired with pops of blue jay or cream gold to enhance the outdoor and sports inspired feel of this modern eco-conscious story. A base of silver lining dark gold gray and sandstorm grounds brighter nuances and bolder contrasts. And that chalky seedling green rounds off the palette offering a touch of softness here. Our home trend forecasts also include a copy um, copy, collection of copyright-free prints, which are designed by illustrators and graphic designers. These are designed to work for and to inspire any print direction, pattern direction, and type for within this trend. So here, these prints really honor those urban origins within this trend. Here we can see abstract repeats distort city architecture, while grid-like patterns interpret gritty street textures. That chameleon placement prints are complemented by graphic green sprouts and shoots, while typography sits on varying playful angles. Okay, let's take a look at one of the micro trends within Future Eden, which is pet friendly design. So we've seen pet ownership really on the rise within recent years, and pet friendly products are here designed without compromising on aesthetics. So for those who love their pets like family, pet furniture needs to reach a new level of style consciousness with things like Ottoman-shaped couches and sculptural cages. We're looking at storage solutions, connect pets and their owners, avoiding added clutter. clutter. Wall-mounted units provide a practical way to store pet products without sacrificing on design. So things that are tucked out of sight when not in use, the units can house toys, treats and leashes. And reflecting the eco mindset of this trend, pet products are crafted from natural materials, so things like oak frames for beds, to natural rubber for toys. And as householders increasingly immerse themselves with nature, hiking culture weaves, which we've seen a lot in the fashion industry in the last few years as well, but it makes its way into the home. So things like outerwear, puffer jackets are really inspiring this quilted and padded designs for both hard goods and soft goods alike. We're also seeing a lot of recycling, mending and repairing. This is really vital to this modern eco-conscious trend. And people are willing to pay extra for sustainable reprocessed yarns and salvage materials. They're happily accepting those small irregularities. 
Home accessories and decorative objects really echo the nature-driven mood of this trend. So we're looking here towards natural materials as well as these sort of indoor-outdoor finishes. We're also seeing multifunctional products really key here, these optimized space in the remote working era. So things like lightweight and transportable items that move with householders working from home, helping to juggle both their professional and personal lives. And as housemakers favor the essentials and illuminate any, eliminate the superficial, functionality and durability drive product from decor ex accessories to furniture direction. So we're looking here at modular, interchangeable, and repairable, repairable parts is really important to this forward-thinking consumer. I think that idea of repairability and also modularity are really key. So thinking about pieces of furniture where the, the hinges or the legs, for example, can be replaced to update and to repair any um, breakages. So materials that stand the test of time and performance is really, really key here. For textiles, we're seeing outdoor terrains really inspire both textile and surface design. Um, so we're seeing moss-like patterns, those sort of faux grass textures, alpine hay composites, really providing that kind of visual connection to nature, with the latter also granting a real sort of haptic experience. We're seeing a real return to hyper-tactile soft furnishings and textiles as consumers are really craving that physical texture. For a slightly more youth interpretation of this trend, these sort of cut out shapes and collaged effects form playful composition for surface design, maybe packaging details, as well as textiles as well. So simplified to their most basic silhouettes, we're seeing motifs from urban architecture as well as the gray outdoor appear abstract and, and distorted, yet blending harmoniously together. Beauty and well-being products here really champion this idea of slow living and natural ingredients that are kinder to the environment as well as our health. So there's a focus here on things like minimal packaging, biodegradable granules, as well as an all-important gender-neutral approach. We continue to reference nature and the great outdoors even in cook and, cook and dine products. So we love the kind of playful feel of this petal-like finish crockery set. And this checkerboard wood um, cutting board explores a more refined take on this trend, exploring how high quality wood takes on an urban but playful feel here. Messaging, type, and narrative for this future Eden trend really echoes the advantages of a slow living mindset, stressing the importance on rest, leisure, and slow growth. And finally, for future Eden, we're looking at household ca hold care. So an eco-conscious consumer mindset also sees a demand for non-toxic household care products, which are kinder to the planet as well as our health, as householders really focus on creating that biophilic influenced healthy home. So that was Future Eden, one of our four trends from our spring summer 23 forecast. And you can see from those previews just how those bigger topics that we explored in radical nature, those bigger macro trends lead into and trickle down into our more specific design forecast. So I'm now going to switch things up a little bit. I'm going to move into our autumn winter uh, seasonal design trends for autumn winter 23 and showcase you a slightly different mood and trend here. So we're moving away from that kind of nature, radical nature, future Eden mood and towards something which is very different but also offers a much more sort of sophisticated and artistic inspired trend. One that lends itself really well to the world of home decor and decorative objects as well. So modern renaissance, so here we have some key words which outline what this modern renaissance trend is all about. Still lifelike, it's very artistic inspired. Classical rebirth, this trend is all about modern um, interpretations of historic and classical influences. It's momental, sensual and refined and sculptural. And again, we have a quote from one of our editors who says, modern renaissance echoes the rebirth of culture and the arts 
as a contemporary ode to classic design and historical masterpieces reinvented with modern form, styling, and narrative. This trend story combines the best of timeless and timely chic. So what is driving this trend? Consumers are seeking ways to reinvent and rejuvenate themselves, having deprived, been deprived of new beginnings so much in recent years. Starved of immersion in art and culture and driven by dramatic shifts in work, life and relationship dynamics, householders will rediscover a curiosity for the topics of art, history, beauty and identity. So a cultural reawakening emerges, represented representative of the bloom that often follows a fallow period. The spirit and design style of the Renaissance cascade through visual language and product design, where classic forms find a new audience and a still life inspired aesthetic emerges. So such dramatic social changes inspire a mindset shift where personal identity is scrutinized and evaluated. We're seeing a new wave of artists and muses becoming interesting to this ever curious consumer. And beauty is redefined for the modern age as a new appetite for more varied definitions drives a, mo a moment for skin inclusivity. So as we see from our mood board here, this story is all about that rebirth of culture appreciating Renaissance-inspired arts and classic aesthetics, but with a modern twist and a modern update. So householders here are really cherishing opening their homes again by hosting in an elegant but still laid-back way. We're seeing friends and loved ones enjoy spending quality time with each other, indulging in food and drink and celebrating around nonchalantly laid table settings. The home becomes a place where the best of timeless and timely chic is combined. So carefully curated still life displays are paired with generous and decorative textiles. Monumental, graceful architecture inspires shape for furniture and decorative elements. And messaging is an ode to contemporary muses, our artists within, new beginnings and honoring what makes life beautiful. So again, here we have our eight shade color palette. So we can see these sort of really rich and earthy architecture inspired tones of this trend. I'll let you take your photos. And then on the next slide, we really dive into this palette and break down how these colors can really work in combination with each other. So you can see here shades that are really reminiscent of natural stones. We're seeing burnt umbers, terracotta. These really form the base of this sort of architectural and Renaissance inspired palette. Warm nuances naturally lend themselves to these sort of tonal harmonies together which are balanced with chalky mauve gray and teal, which offers a sophisticated and com complementary contrast. And we're also really seeing that pop of newness come through with that pop of light ultramarine marine blue. And again, here for Modern Renaissance, we have our print directions. So we can see that the central themes of this trend are classical elements being rebirthed and really taking inspiration from the arts. So abstract architecture placements are combined with sophisticated geometric repeats, while typography is bold and impactful. So let's go into one of the key micro trends for modern Renaissance, which is all about beaded designs. So as maximalism gains importance, again, in interior design direction, there is a growing appetite for things which are purely decorative. So the shape and the structure of beads inspire furniture, lighting, and home decor, really adding that sense of tactility to otherwise simple designs. These beaded details have their origins within sort of 18th and 17th century design. So this really taps into that historic mood, that classic influence of this trend, but gives it a modern twist. So beaded details and rims offer an easy update across categories for this season. We're seeing curved and rounded volumes provide surface interest to furniture, while scallop edges on rugs work really, work really well here. And for prints, we're looking at those sort of highlighted circles in contrasting colors, which hint at, beans even, hint at beads sorry, even on more two-dimensional designs. So furniture and accessories really focus on the details with intricate and decorative rims. So emboss, 
carved, flowing and curved and beaded designs really ooze the sense of sophistication here. We're seeing this really um, develop into the world of sort of built environments as well. So skirting boards, wall panels and railings are all sort of reinvented. The modern revival of these classic details sees them take on a much more maximalist form to become a focal point for interiors. So in really kind of statement colors we're seeing here. And for things such as gift and greetings, move on those sort of scallop or flowing edges with decorative laying effects and cutouts. So now into our product categories. So decorative objects and home accessories really echo the architectural and artistic mood of this trend. We're looking here to softly curved forms, carved details, quality materials, and reworked classics. Textile design is again inspired by Renaissance architecture, the kind of shapes and forms of that um, historic mood and really looking to artistic patterns and motifs, but as well as that sense of tactility and softly curved details. Giving customers the, me the means to embrace and celebrate their body is really essential to this story. So the bathroom as a space and the beauty products within it get an elegant update to become an inviting and soothing space for naturally rejuvenating beauty rituals. So for product, look to things like cupping sets, skin brushes, products that really nourish and nurture. We're also seeing um, lots of brands offering things like solid personal care bars or water-soluble water um, refill options, which is really key for that continuing rise of environmentally aware consumers. indulgent tablescaping. So the act of displaying food and drink becomes an art form here and products enhance this elevated experience. So there's a focus on indulgent tablescaping and premium filled products that echo these classic and architectural influences as people continue to make the most of at home dining, creating special moments at home with curated and considerable, considered tables from plates to the napkins to the candles. Messaging and narrative for modern renaissance explores a classic meets modern mood. So playing with reworking ideas of the artist and the muse, as well as an all-clusive and celebratory message. So the, the home really becomes a place to showcase beautiful homeware, which is inspired by these architectural details. We're seeing this new, what we're calling sculptural minimalism emerge, where the focus is on blending that best of timeless and timely design. And looking at these beautiful sort of gracefully carved and arc shapes is really key here. And finally for party, so again, this sort of indulgent and primal premium tablescaping and settings are really key for party stories within this modern renaissance theme. There's an opportunity here to be playful, highly decorative and over the top. So this is a nice chance to bring in some of those sort of shimmering finishes which really play with that premium feel. So that brings us to the end of today's presentation. I really hope that you've enjoyed um, a little bit of insight into what we do at Trend Bible and some of our home and interior trends for 2023. So before you head off um, and enjoy the rest of your time at Autumn Fair, on screen now is a link to where you can get a download of some of the trends that I've presented to you today. So if you follow the link, you might want to take a photo or jot this down in your notebook. But when you follow the link on screen, and quote, Autumn Fair when you sign up, we'll send you a complimentary download which features some of the trends that I've talked to you about today. And finally, if there's anything else, I'm gonna stay on stage for a bit. My email address is also um, on the slide now if you want to drop me a message. But if anyone has any questions or anything that they'd like to share, I'm gonna stick around, so please come and say hello. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.